With the Confederation of Canada in 1867, the prairies became economically and politically vital to the future of the new country. Recognizing that traditional Métis rights were in jeopardy as political control shifted from the HBC to the new government in Ottawa, Louis Riel seized Upper Fort Garry and established a provisional government that would represent the interests of the region against the claims of newcomers from the east. The Scottish settlers found themselves in the middle of the conflict, torn by their sympathy for both sides. Yeah, the story has it that the um, churchyard was used as an assembly point for a, a ragtag, unofficial militia who were intent on assaulting the upper fort and getting rid of uh, Riel and his cohorts. I've got to believe that um, there was some ambivalence about that, perhaps, with uh, John Black and many of the people of Kildonan intermarried with the Aboriginal people of the area. They also provided the first casualty in what is now known as the First Riel Rebellion. A story also has it that there was a Métis prisoner who was held in the church building overnight uh, while he was being transported. He escaped and in doing so uh, uh, killed the son of uh, Hugh Sutherland, a very prominent uh, Selkirk settler. This caused tremendous anguish and, uh, and grief in the uh, community. And indeed, uh, Hugh Sutherland actually went into the city, uh, into the upper fort, to meet with Louis Riel to urge him and beg him to end the conflict and the violence and settle the, uh, the dispute in other ways. Riel's execution of Thomas Scott gave his enemies the excuse they needed to take strong action, and he fled soon after the province of Manitoba joined Confederation in 1870. With the incorporation of the city of Winnipeg three years later, the seed sown at Seven Oaks began to bloom. But even as the city expanded, the Seven Oaks area remained culturally and politically significant. St. John's College and Manitoba College, established by the Anglican and Presbyterian churches, made Seven Oaks the educational center of the province. St. John's Ravenscourt's Boys' School, the University of Manitoba, and the University of Winnipeg all trace their roots back to Seven Oaks. St. John's Cathedral would remain the most prestigious house of worship for Winnipeg's Anglican elite, and many of those who built the city can be found in its cemetery. Now this is, this is Orkney John Inkster. Uh, John came out to the Red River in the early 1800s. He worked for the Hudson's Bay, and then he set up in business for himself, and he was a very successful businessman. Um, and of course, the father of Inkster everything in Winnipeg, Inkster School, Inkster Gardens, Inkster Boulevard, you name it. And we've got a lot of Inkster stuff. John Inkster's son, Colin, is buried on the other side of St. John's. Both men were wardens of the church in addition to being leading citizens. Colin Inkster is one of the few church members to be immortalized in its stained glass windows. This is William Luxton, who came here in the 1860s from, from England. He was the first public school teacher in Manitoba, and he uh, also was the founder of the what is now the Winnipeg Free Press. I love this. On the side it just says, and Sarah Jane, his wife. It makes me mad because he wouldn't have been able to do all the stuff he did if Sarah Jane hadn't been holding down the home front. This is Sir John Christian Schultz. Now his claim to fame is that he was the fellow who was clapped up by Louis Riel in Fort Garry and escaped and went to Ottawa to garner support to put down the Red River Rebellion of 1870. He eventually became um, an MP, a, a senator, a lieutenant governor of Manitoba, died full of honors in 1905 in California, and was carted back to Winnipeg to be buried. And the Ashdowns have a very spectacular um, edifice over their graves, uh, but they were a very important people in the development of Winnipeg. Uh, James and his brother founded the Ashdown Company, which went for many, many years. They started out as tin merchants, and eventually, of course, expanded into all lines of hardware. Many familiar names from the streets and history of Winnipeg can be found on headstones throughout the cemetery. 
This is, this is the grave, the oldest marked grave in the cemetery. The grave of Sir George Simpson's son, uh, George Geddes Simpson, who died when he was eight months old in 1832. And he was the son of uh, George Simpson and his wife Frances. George was the governor of the Hudson's Bay. The most impressive monument in St. John's Cemetery is undoubtedly the one commemorating John Norquay, Premier of Manitoba from 1878 to 1886. John Norquay was to the west side of the river what Louis Riel was on the east side of the river. He was the spokesperson for this community and um, very well respected. Norquay's status demonstrates how influential the Métis were in the province's early days. However, that influence would quickly diminish as English-speaking immigrants began to flood into the province. And in Seven Oaks, these newcomers found a powerful symbol. <laughs> 